The heart of the problem is the problem of the heart. Last time we were talking about entanglement and I will address some of those issues of how to prevent the entanglement, i.e. sin. First of all, let me say that temptation is not a sin. We know that Christ was tempted in many different ways and never sinned. Why? Because he was prepared, he was equipped for warfare. And speaking of preparation, while I was preparing for this, I was listening to some epic music, which is a type of music that I like. And there was uh, an image that came up on YouTube while the music was playing. And I want to show it to you because it has to do with what we're discussing right now. So if you can see from the picture, the guy is a warrior. He is completely dressed with an armor. And not just that, not just the protection, he also has two swords. So he is ready to do some harm himself. And as he's opening the doors, you see the dragon right on the other side. So he knows that there is an enemy out there ready to do him harm. And that's why he's preparing himself ahead of time. Unlike us, when we basically go out naked, thinking that we can withstand those attacks. And remember, there are often those spiritual battles are just that, spiritual battles. They're fought above our heads. Sometimes we're not even aware of what is actually happening. So in order to fight those type of battles, we gotta have spiritual weapons. We gotta be building walls around us. So if you don't have any buildings around you, if you are unequipped, you are an extremely easy target for the enemy. Actually, the world tells us that we are to be sober and vigilant. The enemy, the devil, prowls just like a lion, ready to devour those that he can find. And that word vigilant in the Greek is actually a war term. It refers to somebody that is like a sentinel, like a guard, that is actually walking on that wall and is very alert because he knows that there is a danger out there, there is an enemy out there. So he wants to be prepared to sound the alarm. And you may ask, how do I build this wall? Well, when Christ tells that parable of the wise man, he says something particular. He says, a wise man is one that hears my word and puts it into practice. It's like the man that actually builds on a solid foundation, on a rock. Unlike the fool, so he's contrasting it, the fool is the one that doesn't listen. I mean, he does listen, but doesn't put it into practice. So he is building on sand. And when the storm comes, all of a sudden one house stands while the other one is destroyed. So point number one, do you know his word? Do you know the difference between the rock and the sand? And secondly, do you want to build on a rock? Because some of us, I mentioned that last time, you know, I don't know if you caught it, I said that we know what God wants, but basically we say we don't care because I want what I want. So when it comes to building, it's the same way. Building, ah, yeah. I'm lazy, it's too costly, I don't want to do it. So I'd rather stay in my tent outside in the elements and when the storm comes, I pay for the consequences instead of building on a solid foundation. And that is a big problem. When Christ gave the Sermon on the Mount, he said some things that were kind of hard to digest or even hard to understand. He said, do not commit murder. But I say that if you're speaking with anger, you're speaking wrongly against the brother, you already committed murder or it is said not to commit adultery. Yet, if you're looking at a woman with lust, you already committed adultery in your heart. And that is the big issue. Like a dear friend of mine in Rome says is, the heart of the problem is the problem of the heart. Unfortunately, all of us have a broken, wicked heart. So even if we know that Christ in his word says that something is wrong, we want to find ways of justifying it. We want to say, well, did he really say that? Did he really mean that when he said this and that? So we're trying to actually make the matter gray. Why? Because we want to find freedom. We want to find justification in what ultimately we want to do. 
As I said before, I want what I want, period. Last week, I met a couple, a very nice couple. Both of them combined actually had more than 25 years in jail because they were drug dealers and drug users. But they came to the point where they said, enough is enough, that's it. I don't want this life anymore. And that is the condition that gave them a chance to change. They checked into a, a program. Uh, during that program, they gave their life to Christ and their life was transformed radically. So they got to the point of repentance because they couldn't stand it anymore. And now they're married, they have a house of their own, they both have jobs. They truly had a 180 degree change. And this is the issue. When Peter and Judas did what they did, both of them had remorses, regretted what they did. However, only Peter came to the point of repentance. You see, asking for forgiveness is fine, but getting to the point of repentance, of turning or having that change is where the ultimate goal is. And that term in the Greek is metanoia, which is really saying a change of heart due to a change of mind. And that is exactly what Christ meant when he says, the time has come, the kingdom is near. Repent or convert and believe in the good news. So our Father wants our obedience not to stifle us, but to actually free us from that entanglement of sin. That obedience is to give us freedom. So remember, most of these battles are spiritual battles that we need to fight with spiritual weapons. So build that wall. Confess that sin. If it's a sin, especially if it's a repetitive sin, name it even out loud. Renounce it in the powerful name of Jesus. Remember that sin is a decision, is not an accident that just happened. So since this is volition, who are you going to please today? Continue to pray for me, I'm praying for you. If you want to go a little bit further with this, it cannot be dealt with just in five, six minutes. Please let me know in the line below and I will try to address those issues. Love you guys and I catch you next week. Have a fantastic weekend. Ciao.